so I uh, thought I'd start this little home office, music room, studio tour off. This is a secondary room, and I'm going to be converting this to store a lot of my music, including my CD and uh, my CD collection, and at some point my uh, vinyl collection as well. And this is a custom set of shelves that I had built. I had to store my CD collection right now. Probably be adding on to it somewhere in the future, but right now I'm guessing there is probably about 350 plus CDs right now, maybe more. I haven't really counted them, but gives you an idea. But uh, very, very nice to have this in the uh, in the uh, home office. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and go on in to the home office and the music studio and music room and whatever you would call it. And this kind of a give you a general idea of what what it looks like. This is where I work all day, create videos, test audio gear, listen to music. Oh um, yeah, this is the uh, this is it. So I thought I'd start here the opposite side of the room and uh, on this shelf. See some camera gear, lenses, my old uh, Canon camera, cleaners, that kind of thing. And then some of my Hi-Fi Man Planar Magnetic Headphones. They've been so good with the channel, um, providing products for me to review. Some they let me keep, some I have to return. But they're just a wonderful company. I, I love working with Hi-Fi Man. Then uh, the Workdale Wittens. There is a Apple HomePod. Got my printer that I use for work. <laughs> and there's a, uh, my uh, so, uh, yeah, Sony AX100 uh, 4K camera. The other Borfdale LN. You see they're on these really nice stands. These sound fantastic. No, they're not in the best uh, spot. When I retire in the next year or so, I'm going to, move those to a different part of the room and have them, more room treatment and have them set up really, really properly. But in a pinch, that's uh, kind of the setup for right now. Now we're moving over to my digital rig. And right here we have the Marantz PM8006. And it's an integrated amplifier. Does not have any digital inputs, anything like that. It is strictly a analog uh, integrated amplifier rated at 70 watts per channel into 8 ohms and built like a tank. Then we have the Hi-Fi Man. Uh, this is the uh, Serenade. It is a combination DAC and headphone amplifier. It's an R to R DAC which I am in the process of reviewing. It sounds absolutely amazing. And connected to that is a Weem Pro Plus. Now you could use it as a standalone DAC, but I have it going to the uh, Hi-Fi Man Serenade. And then here is a uh, Denon DCD A20 CD player that I use as a transport because it's also connected to the Hi-Fi Man DAC. Down below, Collected my vinyl collection, relatively small. These are all my Beatles studio albums. Over here I keep some jazz vinyl. And the rest, down at the bottom, is going to be classic rock from the time I was a kid. Basically, I started collecting and I hit top albums from, the, say, starting 1973 through about 1982, roughly. And that is my vinyl collection so far. But I am adding to it a little bit at a time. I'm probably going to be collecting more jazz on vinyl going forward. So that is it. Okay, after the digital rig, there's a, uh, a subwoofer. It's a, uh, I think an ELAC subwoofer. Just a nice little 10-inch sub. Does a great job. These are the Kess Q350s. Love these speakers. I think they sound amazing um but i do think the q150s are probably a better deal sound wise for what they cost versus what you get from the 350s i would stick with the 150s and add a sub so you know save the difference in cost and get a sub okay 
Now, this is kind of my dream rig right here. This is stuff I wanted as a young man I couldn't afford. Um, life's been pretty good to me, so I was able to pick some of this gear up and kind of put it together. We're going to start with the turntable. This is the Denon DP65F. The top of the line fully automatic turntable Denon made. It has been totally restored, all recapped, uh, motor loop clean and lubricated, everything just taken care of. It sounds amazing. This up. On it is the Nagaoka M110 cartridge. I'm actually looking for another head shell. I'm going to get a Denon moving coil cartridge as well and have kind of both. Okay, coming down, we have a Sony cassette deck. This is the TCK615S. It's just a really nice three-head cassette deck. Um, Dolby S on there. I'm kind of a cassette uh, fanatic. I like the sound of cassettes. I like the physical media of cassettes. I like goofing around with cassettes. Uh, no, they're obviously not superior to vinyl or a CD, but properly calibrated with the right tape, you can get really close to great, uh, almost CD near near CD quality if you know what you're doing and you have a great deck and great condition. But that's pretty rare for a lot of people. Okay, coming down, another. This is just a Wien Pro streamer, topping uh, DX3 Pro Plus, I think, uh, DAC, and then the NAD5 C38 uh, CD player. Great little CD player. Again, use it in transport mode. And then just down below, just different uh, stuff I've reviewed, little DAX and some headphones. Coming over to this side of the rack is my uh, Pioneer SXD7000. This is a 120 uh, watt per channel receiver. It is uh, kind of a rare receiver. They only made this in 1980, but they kind of switched from the analog to the digital. It's kind of a hybrid on a tuner. For example, it's a Flora scan, so it has the blue meters. Just a beautiful, beautiful uh, receiver. Uh, been recapped and restored, so it should last for many, many years. Okay, coming on down is a Pioneer CTF 900 cassette deck. Uh, it works pretty well. Do need to do a little bit of work on it, but uh, it sounds fantastic. And it's in the, the Flora Scan, which that's what I wanted the collection of the, the Flora Scan um, hardware from Pioneer. And it is an incredible sounding deck. Again, we have a graphic equalizer, C. I think the SG300 equalizer. <laughs> okay, um, some people ask, what is this? This is called a dynamic range expander. It's the uh, Pioneer RG2. And you use it with vinyl, basically, or cassette, and it restores some of the dynamic range uh, that gets lost in the mastering process of going to vinyl. I, I like it. I think it makes it sound a little bit more punchy. Um, but you do have to be judicious with the use of this. And then down at the bottom is a little timer on your timer. And then this is a reverb unit. And it's just fun to play with. Uh, SRs, I think it's the SR303, if I'm mistaken, but... or. Yeah, SR300. Anyhow, I play with it, but um, again, you have to be very judicious. Sometimes, though, it does actually improve um, a particular singer's voice. kind of makes it sound like they're in a, a hall of some type. You can adjust the reverb on that. Okay, so this is the desk bench I have set up, and this is the Kef Q150. And this is just a great-sounding little speaker, and... I think it does a great job, especially in the near field uh, position that I use it in. 
And so, yeah, that's what I use kind of as a baseline to test other desktop or bookshelf speakers, et cetera. All right, moving along. This is the uh, Fosse Audio ZA3 Class D amplifier. Love it. And this is my reference Class D mini amplifier for now. What do we have here? Well, this is my reference DAC. It is the Topping DX or the Topping D70 Pro Saber Edition. Very nice, uh, very nice DAC. Measures well. Um, it doesn't have a digital sheen to it and uh, has a balanced output, which goes into a Hi Fi Man Prelude headphone amp which is also a product that I am working on a review on as well. Coming across, this is my music server. It's a repurposed uh, Intel-based Mac Mini running a Plex server. And uh, attached to it is my music library, which I use Plex Amp to uh, stream via Chromecast uh, to the Weem uh, minis and the, or I'm sorry, to the Weem Pro and the Weem Pro Plus. Uh, uh, Chromecast doesn't work on the, the Weem Mini. And of course, this would be the other Q150. Uh, just uh, my light stand up here. And uh, this, this is a uh, LED um, light. I forget the brand on that. I've had it for several years now. Got the uh, light stand and the, the, it's like a gray card for balancing color, that kind of thing, white balance. Then we have my camera that I use to record at my desk. It is the Sony A6400, and I use a teleprompter, and uh, it's the DeskView teleprompter with their app. It works okay. I'm not a big fan of teleprompters, but uh, sometimes they come in handy, especially if, if you're trying to remember a lot of technical details about a product. Uh, my Apple Steve Jobs kind of light. Um, it's old. I think I bought that not too long after Steve passed away. It's still going, but the light is pretty weak on it. Okay, for my computer. Oh, and the camera, I should say, is connected via the CamLink 4K directly to my uh, Mac Studio. Now, as far as the monitor is concerned, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty wide. This is a BenQ, I forget the model number, but it's a 21 to 9 ratio ultra-wide monitor. And mm -hmm. because I sell software for a living, I make videos. Um, I, I'm more interested in productivity. I'm not really much of a gamer anymore. So for productivity, it's really tough to beat an ultra-wide. You like to have like three different apps open at the same time, which I typically do. Then down below, uh, a little of uh, this... Uh, Air or Apple uh, HomePod Mini. Um, that's a little wean there that I need to do something with. Apple TV 4K that I'm using for some testing as well. Coming along, the Apple Studio, and then there's a um, Cal Digit Thunderbolt uh, a hub on there. Coming all the way out the bottom, that's a MX Master Mouse. And then that is the MX Keys keyboard, which I think is one of the best keyboards you can get for a Mac. I really like it. Nice productivity, has a nice backlight on it, good touch to it, good feel. So yeah, it has served me really, really well. Well, picking up from that part of the room, have a shelf up here, a little dust thing. For my cassettes, I got a shelf up here with some blank tapes. This is kind of fun. This is the Tascam... Uh, they, they actually came out with some brand new, um, well, I don't think it's chrome, but cobalt. It's like a Type 2 tapes in this nice uh, kind of re real, real look. And they came out with a limited run of those not too long ago, and I bought one. I hear they, they don't really work that well, but they're cool to look at. This is from, uh, my gosh, I think from probably the, the 80s. Um, TAC put these out some for their dealers and stuff, and they kind of caught on, and they started selling these to the public for a while. Hard to get a hold of. Very expensive. Never been used. Don't plan on using it. Wore blank cassette tapes. 
various cleaners, et cetera. Okay, more, more headphones. We've got a lot of headphones. There we go. And <laughs> Simon Garfunkel poster. Got some records here on the wall. If we step back, <laughs> here we go. And that is a uh, Hi-Fi Man, the EF400 headphone amp and DAC, Ardar DAC. That's actually feeding this, a Pioneer SX3700 receiver. Just got some service work done on that. Beautiful sound. I think it's 45 watts per channel. Fluoroscan, very, very nice receiver. And then down below, just some old headphones, different, different things. And finally, we have some networking. Just thought I'd just give you one more quick tour around the room in its entirety. There we go. Kind of my view every day. It's a little overcrowded. Again, when I retire, I am going to get rid of some of this stuff, consolidate, add some more room treatment, and set up uh, my rig the way it should be in a more proper form. But anyway, you can see this is kind of where I work at all day long. Oh, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.